experience behind the scenes here, it will also involve spiritual warfare. Uh, now, you know me, I'm the guy, I love to tell jokes, I love to laugh, but then there's also a time to get very serious, and that's why we invited the next speaker. He's also a sweetheart. He's just a big sweetie. Don't let his, don't let his presence take you off guard, but this guy is a heavyweight when it comes to talking about difficult issues that most people would run away from. Russ Dizdar, ordained since 1978, has served as senior pastor of four churches for more than 30 years. He was also executive director of Greater Akron Youth for Christ, a police chaplain, founder and director of Shatter the Darkness since 1980, and preemption broadcast since 2008. Russ conducts training seminars across the United States as well as crusade evangelism. Russ has very wide experience in the field of law enforcement. He has, intended, he has attended many conferences and seminars, including those on satanic ritual abuse, mind control, spiritual warfare, abduction research, evangelism, counseling, and many other fields. He authored and taught 14 college-level courses over the last 30 years. Rush published his first book, The Black Awakening, Rise of the Satanic Super Soldiers and the Coming Chaos, in 2009. Other titles include Once Blind, Dark Places, Dark Powers, Five A's of Spiritual Warfare, and a new release this summer, R1919, The Real Reason for Armageddon. You're not here to hear me talk. Please welcome to the platform this afternoon our good friend and expert on occultism, Russ Dizdar. Bless you, Chief. So we say thank you deeply to Tom for letting us come. It's a privilege for us to be here. We um, are grateful for Sam, for Mark, for all the workers behind, for Bob doing all the stuff behind the scenes. For all the uh, workers uh, throughout the hotel, don't forget, uh, bless them, uh, pray for them. We are here to hear a lot of content, but without the spirit of God's power and presence and the, and the central message of the gospel, I guess we'd all just um, camp out with guns and food and wait for it all to end, huh? Yeah. The Hoover Dam, it's really like this, how I see the world right now, the Hoover Dam. On the one side is this thick, dark blackness pushing on that side of the Hoover Dam. Here's the rest of us on the other side of it, down below. Now the Hoover Dam is cracking. You understand that? Yes. You feel it in the air? Yes. So does billions around the world. It is that feeling in the air is now embedded in global consciousness, and it comes from somewhere. We're going to get right into this, the Black Awakening, uh, the rise of... Now, this seminar right here, this right here is a 24-hour course. It's online free, but we're going to do it in about an hour. The Black Awakening, rise of the um, Antichrist troops. Black Awakening is not my phrase. It is a phrase given to me by a Fort Bragg Psy warrior, chosen one, back in the 90s, sitting on the side of a lake when they ripped open my shirt to make sure I wasn't recording them as they told me about satanic rituals, deaths, powers, remote viewing, astral projection, the weaponization of dark powers. When they took us to a ritual site where sacrifice, where we dug up bones and brought them back. Now this is where they explained to me, you believe in John, Whitfield, uh, John Wesley and George Whitfield and the revivals of Jonathan Edward? I said, yes. Well, we have something coming that is uh, completely contrasted. It is an inverted satanic Pentecost. It is uh, the black awakening. It is the chaos. You've heard, and this is them, they're telling me this. You've heard of the chaos before a new order. And I said, sure. We are here. We are the ones that will cause it. Now, I'm just telling what one, and then another, and then another, and then another, and another. After 30 years, thousands of hours, numerous states from all over the place. Let me ask you a question. If you heard about satanic ritual abuse, multiple personality disorder, DID, forget all those terms. You're going to listen to me today as I, as I share with you what has been going on since the end of the Nazi war and the spread of what began there went global and underground and is operative. Is there a shadow government? Sure there is. Sure there is. Is there a plan for a great chaos? You feel it in the air? Because it's on the ground. And we're headed towards it. The picture you see is Jared. 
Arizona shooter. That's the type of individual I'm talking about in a way. This is the kind of individual that uh, goes in and randomly slaughters everybody else, but he also has a target. Now, I don't know Jared personally, but in my observations of him, he reminds me of a chosen one, of one of these who have been split and programmed and has demonization inside of him. He did what he did, and I'm sure, like the VTech shooter, I'm sure that he was going to, with suicide programming, take out his own life. But they stopped him. That, that is the only humor you're going to get the entire hour. That is the absolute, see I can't tell the great jokes in the midst, it's just, it's just hard, but that is, the, uh, that is great. I, I might have to incorporate that sound. Now you look at that picture and we're playing about opium, you know. Amazing. Jared um, was taken away and then sooner or later what happens? An officer finds um, a professor sitting in the same crossroads where the shooting was done and he's chanting maybe twilight languages the officer didn't know he's commanding him to stop and get up he wouldn't get up he wouldn't move uh, the professor of the school is chanting and the officer finally gets close enough to hear him turn around and say we are the chosen ones we're the ones you've been waiting for and they had to literally take him away you hear this phrase, please understand, there is the bloodline of Christ all the way back to Adam. But there's another unholy bloodline that the dark side understands, left-hand pathers understand, uh, Crowleyans understood, and all of those in satanic ritual abuse understand well. A dark blood, a satanic blood, a bloodline that involves power and charged blood. In this twilight of fallen human history, I do believe we are at the end, Matthew 24. Here's what we need, and I want to do this right now, too. I want to tell you right now that we really need immense prayer. Do you know anybody that's a prayer warrior, powerful, that can get answers? Today is the 15th of July, Bohemian Grove, the cremation of care. Friday was uh, the 13th. Rituals had gone on throughout the United States, Europe, all this weekend, and a big one in California by the Russian River, where they're going to summon dark powers in what they call is a mock human sacrifice. It is not. Summon the powers and release them in a targeted release on the leaders that have been drawn from all over the world. It has everything to do with where we're going and ultimately Armageddon. Let's do it. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask for the Spirit of God to guide, to lead, to listen, just to move in our hearts here, for us to listen. We pray right now for the power of the Spirit of God to give us strength. We rebuke by the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, every demonic presence and power, commanding you to get out, release hearts and lives. Lord God, right now, truly, we need our lives, like Acts 4, great boldness to become great prayer warriors, great witnesses, and servants to the very end, to the last breath. We acknowledge Christ in the room, in the sight of God, Christ Jesus, and as Scripture says, the elect angels. Don't forget Acts chapter 2, 4, 6, and 8. Powerful, powerful chapters in Scripture. We need the prayer. I want to just touch quickly on the four horsemen. White horse, red horse, black horse, pale green horse. The red horse is called the, the pyros, the fiery red horse. Come and see is the voice. And all of a sudden the picture of this horse is unleashed. It is a biblical prophetic, uh, it's, it's communication in, in drama, in pictorial form. It is a picture of what's going to happen on a global scale. Peace, arene, is taken from the earth. And all of a sudden, something causes human beings to begin to kill one another. And the word used here is not military. It is svadzo. It is used in animal-human butchery or animal sacrifice. It is a bloody ritualistic type term so that when arene, peace, if you, if you are saved, you've got arene with God, peace with God, the cessation of hostilities. You are now at peace with God, justified, Romans 5, right? 
And as I understand the peace of God in my life, and God brings us peace, I've never had to search since 37 years ago. Out of the Buddhist temple, out of occultism, out of the ascended masters, the power of God in Christ by one man that just inundated me with the gospel, that night I got saved. I understood the dark powers masqueraded as angels of light. I understand the power of God in Christ, in redemption. But I'm going to tell you now, as God gives this picture the future, this is a global event, and some in the underground, maybe we should entitle this uh, whole uh, session here, The Underworld, because that's where we're going to go a little bit. It's one thing to look at everything going on above, but what we've had to do over the last 25, almost 30 years, is track backwards, go underground, go places, dig up bones, individuals that we've dealt with, hundreds of slides of dead bodies, a pink head of a girl who, in a sacrifice, had her head cut off after her skin was peeled, and I had to see that picture, and it's never left my mind. I shared it last year, and I had an, uh, a, a, a fake picture of it up. I'm not going to do it again. Red horse, devastating. Hundreds of millions will die. By the time of the pale horse, one-fourth of mankind. Georgia Guidestones, the reduction of human population, that is, that is a plot from hell's kitchen. That is part of their agenda for the management of the, the rest of the human race that they will use not just for the Antichrist getting to the, uh, to the temple to say, hey, I am God. This is all about Armageddon. This is all about the third attempt to try to stop God, kill God, annihilate God. In the heavenlies, there was the attempt when Christ came, there was the attempt. And all of what we're going through right now and all of the ramping up you see right now and everything going in that direction. Revelation 19, 19, the beast, the theorons on the field and the armies of the Antichrist, the most powerful military global system energized by dark powers, mark of the beast on them and they've worshipped the image of the beast, the icon of the theorons. Their weapons are raised into the sky. They come only for one reason, to make war on the rider of the white horse. All of this is about Armageddon. And Armageddon cannot occur without Revelation 16, when the dragon and the false prophet and the Antichrist release in occult left-hand path form out of their mouth demons that go on a planetary scale to the king's military and political leaders and by that supernatural planetary wave of power draw them to Armageddon. Maybe that's 10 years away. Maybe less. The only way a new order can come to power is for the old one to be removed. It is truly, if we are able and we have some of what God has done is, is take hell's playbook and say, hey, I see what you're doing, now I'm going to put it in scripture and warn and bring this out and show this, this evolutionary development, this frog in the kettle approach, and then I'm going to show the events, chaos and antichrist, apocalypse and rise of the false prophet and at the temple and the abyss being opened and the planetary wave, the ritual release of demonic presence and Armageddon. That's why I think it's very important when we read Matthew 24, Jesus unleashes and he says, see, I've told you ahead of time. When you see all of these things, all of those listed in one chapter, all of those are on the field now, when you see that, you know it's very close. We cannot expect it to get better. That's all right. The Spirit of God is in you and the hand of God is on your life. That's all right. Let's face this Goliath, not like the soldiers up in the rocks, but like David out on the field. Out on the field is where the power of God was. Out on the field is where the hand of God was. Out on the field is where victory of a humongous, dark, menacing, mocking presence See, that dark side burns my britches. I don't know about you, but it burns my britches when I hear about the abuse, when I hear about what they've done, when I see what they're doing. When I see the man in Florida bite off the head and the eyeball and the face, the other man, not bath salts, though Pharmacon will play a big part in the book of Revelation in the future, Pharmacon is connected to demon worship. 
It's inseparable. Gateway drugs. But that man, cannibalistic, bloodlust, we've seen that kind of spirit before. A regime change is coming. It will not be voted in. You will not get to vote on this. Nobody will get to vote on this issue down the road. A new order, Revelation 13. The Greek word anabano is used twice. There is an earlier word used of the Antichrist, apocalypse, an unveiling. In all three cases, it means this. Before there is an apocalypse, an unveiling of the Antichrist, he already has to be here. Before there is an anabano, a immediate rise of a global shadow, shadow government and system, before that can be, it has to be in place. Before the false prophet can rise and ascend from under the earth, hidden, Anabano, he rises, he ascends from out of the earth. He has to exist. A beast system that Daniel 2,700 years referred to as the most fierce, the most humongous, global, horrific. It's grave information. Nostradamus doesn't have it. Edgar Cayce doesn't have it. Coast to coast doesn't have it. God has given infallible, accurate intel of the future exactly down to the feelings and the actual words of those in the future. We have intel that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. It will rise from pre-existence. Revelation 13, like a leopard, so fast, like a bear, so thunderous, like a lion, so loud. Revelation 13, it will be an unequal system of fierce satanic evil. It will be in place long before it bursts into power. It will be in place as a shadow system longer than it will operate as a visible government. The system must have political, financial, and military force. No system can come to power without the troops. Hitler knew this. In his conquest for the world in the Third Reich, in the conquest of a master race, occult revelation became political ideology. Spirits revelations were brought into the development of the science, the political, the military, the quest among Nazis. They came up with a concept from spiritual revelation, a master race. Let's take Germans who can prove Aryan descent because Aryans, from our spiritual understanding, Aryans were the ancient godmen, Nephilim. They were the ones that have the power inside of their genetics and uh, they will enhance humanity. So let's create Lebensborn. Let's create life birthing sinners all over Germany and let's begin to breed selective breeding spiritually and genetically breeding so the next generation can be more Aryan, more pure blood, more power in the blood. And so by the end of the 1930s and the beginnings of the 40s, they say, some say 400,000, some say 800,000, some say more. Babies were birthed in that way, bloodline, spiritually, in spiritual calculation to become the master race, the troops that would back the regime of the Nazis in a global quest so they could reign a thousand years. The idea, though the Nazis in one sense are gone, the idea is not gone. The need for troops to um, help bring about the collapse. How else? Not just economic. It's not just going to be economic, it's going to be bloodshed. It's going to be the grid, the food chain, it's going to be nations collapsing, it's, it's going to be skirmishes, but it's going to be targeted removal of, of pre-chosen resistors. I'm going to tell you about this in a second. Political, financial, military force. You cannot have a global order without the troops. You know what they've told me face to face? when they've switched to program personality, enhanced by demonization, we are the legions that shall rule the earth. We will make Hitler's SS troops look like choir boys. And what we've seen over the years, though I'm big, I got guys that were bigger than me, 
when a little federal officer's wife would switch to a subpersonality, demonized and charged, she could take them out, all of them. Think in terms of Mark chapter 5, superhuman strength, but there's programming, there's design, there's some sense of uh, at least their belief that they've got a piece of the old God blood, Nephilim blood in them, that they're superior. There's a couple of them sitting in this room at this Congress. Those troops believe they are a master race, superior to you singletons, you normies. They believe because of the splitting and the programming and the enhancing, they have clairvoyance, they've got telekinesis, they can remove you, they can astral project, they can summon powers and release them, they know ancient twilight languages. They are toxic like a charged object but we don't understand how many. In my opinion, there are up to 100 million persons who have been forged to become actual troops. As we begin to deal with it, and we'll talk about that, about 30 years ago, we had no idea. I mean, it's one thing to evangelize and pray for healing and deal with demonization when you see it. It's another thing to find out behind the demonization is sub-programmed, sub-personalities that have names, that have histories, that have abilities, that have been watching you. And then find out the coven and the handlers. And then find out the next city and the next city then find out there's 20 of them, then there's 1,000 a, a of them, and then there's 100,000, and then there's 2.4 million. 100 million. The phrase, we are the legions that will rule the earth, was one chosen one that we dealt with. When the guys brought him to church, I said, watch him. He's got the eyes. He's got multiple eyes that when he switches, you can see the demonization. Uh, inside, they're observing. Inside, they're watching. There's more to him. He attacked one of the other pastors, and that pastor had to fight for his life. He was missing, so the officers called me in to Cuyahoga Falls, and I got to the house, and they said, a German man is calling, and they've got this guy, and they're torturing him, and they demand for you to be here. So the officers had a tap on the phone lines, officers were everywhere, the phone call came in, and guess what happens? A German, heavy German accent speaking individual was telling me, you have ruined our guy, you have corrupted his blood, and we must purify his blood, and you can hear this man screaming then in the background. He was missing two or three days. So as the conversation went on, I finally got bugged with the German Nazi Satanist individual and I just said well I rebel against your master also I hate Satan and evil and I started just to unleash on him the officer kind of got mad the German guy hung up and everything went quiet for about 35 minutes and then the individual that was missing pulled in the driveway he walked into the door his face was cocked differently his eyes switched he ran towards me he grabbed my throat I'm a pretty good sized guy and we've had a lot of training in the past but it took me three particular kinds of blows to even break the, the hands around my neck before I could rebuke the powers that were inside of him. He then began to fight with the officers and they arm, you know, cuffed him in the back and then they had the leg chain him. Detective Gramley's holding his legs down. The other guy's got him down here. I'm holding his chest and he goes blank. And then he comes back to himself and he looks around and says, Pastor Russ, what are they doing to us? Why, why are we, what, what happened? Where have I been? What's been going on? And when I looked up at the officer, he switched back and the German personality tried to bite into my face. I didn't care about the officers and what they thought at that time. I just said, in the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke the powers of darkness and I went into complete you know, deliverance mode. He went silent again. Everybody backed away. And all of a sudden, this man, his whole body went up like this. And the German guttural, demonized voice screamed, we are the legions that shall rule the earth. He had just killed his second 17-year-old victim in a ritual at Futon Road where they stabbed her probably about 100 times, sexually brutalized her, allowing the demons to come on that energy and then took the energy of the demons in to purify, demonize his blood. On Satanic Revels, August the 3rd, coming up. 
on satanic or demon revels in July the first, what nobody knew was where Kathy was left, a little 14 year old, a month in it earlier was left 200 yards away. Now that law enforcement couldn't get to them, the FBI has taken over. It's been over 12 years. They can't nail the individual that did it. And that burns my bridges. That absolutely gets me up at night to pray because wherever he is, I know the force and the power. Up front, nice, calm. You'd let him marry your daughter. When he switches, beyond Charles Manson, beyond Ted Bundy, beyond John Wayne Gacy. By the way, John Wayne Gacy and uh, uh, Ted Bundy and Jeffrey Dahmer, they were all multiples, undetected and undealt with, sub-personalities who did some of the stuff. We are the chosen ones we have worked with for years, first generation. All across America, counselors and pastors and people began to have to work with satanic ritual abuse, multiple personality disorder, uh, DID, whatever they want to call it now. They began to find them in every single psych ward, every counseling center in the late 70s, early 80s, all through the 90s. But here's where we've come to now. If you don't help and break the chain of all the bondage in a first generation, the sub-personalities inside, demonized and programmed, will do it to their own kids, to the kids. And if those kids are not, the chain's not broken, they're not saved and healed and delivered and helped, they do it to their kids. We now are dealing with four generations, from 65 to 55, from 45 to 35, from 25 to 18, and all the way down. We're now doing and working with eight-year-olds and six-year-olds. A little girl who can switch and a male personality come up demonized and know that they are special to Satan. They've been sexually brutalized. They've been through rituals. They've seen blood. They've seen torture beyond anything we have seen on TV. Where does it all begin? We go back to Genesis 3.15, a war after the collapse in the garden, an exchange of the glory of God for finite, an exchange of truth for a lie, and our genetics were changed. I don't know what you know and what you feel about the fall of the human race, but when the Spirit of God left, we were injected. We had the, the sin nature, the sin code, a force, Romans 8, a, a force operative inside, and Satan's rights, the death code inseparably connected. It's in us. We weren't meant to die, rot in a grave. We weren't meant to have our spirit ripped from our human body like that. That was the battle in the garden. God said, don't. One scripture verse, one singular verse. Here's your guard. That's all you need, one verse. Here's your guard to preserve eternity, to preserve your walk with me, to preserve your seeing God face to face, to preserve what we had in the garden. That was exchanged. And from that time all the way to the Nazis, a war has been going on. I think the Nazis and Hitler, that was kind of just a little test, maybe a little uh, push, uh, and then a behind-the-scenes hidden development, a mysterium, a secret power of lawlessness operative, developing what needs to be in place before it arrives in our faces. Here's where we can start. Modern phenomena of satanic ritual abuse, multiple personality disorder, DID. I ask you to throw away the terms for this reason. That's not what the ones who came up with the technology and the mind control and the demonization and the concept of a master soldier race, that's not what they call them. BWBs, Babylon Working Babies, or Chosen Ones is the term. In the 70s, they began to show up in psych wards, and the DSM-2, the DSM they didn't even know what to call it, so they diagnosed him as schizophrenic at first, but then they began to come in by the thousands. By the end of the 80s, the tens of thousands. By the 90s, Holly Hector at Centennial Hospital in Denver said, hey, now we know there's 2.4 million. Colin Ross, who I don't totally agree with, 
In 2004, in his book, uh, when it was named Project Bluebird, uh, The Purposeful Creation of Multiple Personality Disorder, he agreed with an assessment that in the United States, there are 10 million. And all he does is work with them in the secular vein where they can't find the real help. So in the last number of years, we've been going after the statistics. We've been going to the sites. We've been taking in folks from all over. We have conversed with those in Germany. So we've gone to the ones in Canada and to Australia and to England and Ireland and Scotland and in Spain and France and all throughout Italy and deeply in the Vatican. Malachi Martin's description in wind house, windswept house of a satanic ritual in St. Paul's in the, in the uh, Annunciation of the Antichrist uh, in a synchronized ritual with something here in South Carolina. There's probably a third place that wasn't mentioned. I read this material and I believe it is true and I think that he was depicting the kinds of rituals that involve chosen ones. Now 100 million not just in the United States. See, why are they here? In the United States, let's drop it down. Only 10 million of them here. Only 10 million where they have been split inside, programmed by somebody imposing an agenda, and then demonization and power put on that, and then put down so nobody else can see it, except when they trigger them to come up to train them or to use them. Let's say there's a million. Do you realize that in satanic ritual abuse, it all begins in childhood, that's, that style of it all begins in childhood. Do you realize that it had to be created? You don't catch this like a flu. You don't get this by going to the Cathedral of the Black Goat, traditional satanic church in Los Angeles and say, hey, I want to do a ritual where I renounce Christ and I uh, give my soul to Satan. You can do that down there. They've got a book called The Devil's Bible. They got the rituals for it insane forget the terms they're called chosen ones chosen from demonized bloodline chosen in sexual union and conception rituals are done pre-conception whether you or i believe it or not they believe something happens at the moment of conception stop 700 years before god becomes human there's a prediction of emmanuel when mary is told by the angel that the Holy Spirit will cause this. Spirit to human female egg, the incarnation. Perfect mix. Fully God, fully man. Different than the Nephilim. Quite different and in counterfeit to the original incarnation, most likely the Antichrist will be born by bloodline, counterfeit, incarnation as Homo Satanus. They all believe this in the underground. When you begin to think in terms of what this means right now, it's one thing to say, I hear the stories because at every conference I go to, an officer will come to me and say, I've seen this. Those who've worked in psych wards will come to me and say, we have this all over our psych wards. For the United States alone, let's just let you know this, every single psych ward, every single city, every psych ward has had them, many of them, over the last 40 years. In our experience, not even half have gone to psych wards for their help. When you find one satanic, richly abused individual, please understand this, there is, as you track it, an old bloodline. When it comes to first generation, an old black flame, nazi that old agenda. The old ones, they're here. Every place you find satanic, richly abused individuals, they cannot exist without those who know how to split, bond, program, demonize, train, control, trigger, use, and maintain as they wait for the great triggering. Forging them, it's mind control, it's soul control, it's total. It's truly a mutation of humanity.
They've taken human personality and way beyond hypnosis where someone hypnotizes somebody and says, okay, I know you're a football player, but we're going to hypnotize you. We're going to turn you into a 12-year-old little ballerina and you got a tutu on and you're going to dance on the stage. You know, hypnotists can make a big old football player do that if you take them down far enough. This goes beyond that. Permanent states, substates. The subpersonalities are different from demonic entities, and even they know that. So in working with them, there's a, a difficulty in understanding the differences. It becomes complex. On our line, we have on our website 27-hour training course, a beginning training course on how to help them. Splitting them. How do you take a human soul, so suke, the personality, trauma-based and cause a split? The main person, little Sally, goes down and raw personality, as they call it, come up and the, they begin to bond that personality to them. You're one of us. You're special. We are your creators. Then they begin to impose the programming. Anywhere from speech to recorded to screen memories, whatever's needed to make something out of the raw personality. Then the demonization, some training, and then putting them down bring them up later to do the same, bring them, putting them down. And the goal, a satanic chosen one has an upfront personality who is programmed to be amnesic, who doesn't know that inside of them are other personalities, assassins, sex slaves, runners, enforcers, informers. They have within them dozens of purposely created subpersons who have jobs, abilities, and special work to do. These subpersons can be called up, triggered to be used, and we've seen this again and again and again. We felt the wrath of this again and again and again. Attempted murders, I can tell you about from these kind of individuals that have come again and again. I know of one, the bayonet was uh, uh, a f not even a fourth of an inch from my head when I wrote notes and the sergeant who brought his wife in all of a sudden switched and the subpersonality had it plotted and I'm writing notes and all of a sudden, bam! I look up, she had switched to another personality, her eyes were blackened out, and a bayonet was stuck in my desk. When the cops finally arrived, they didn't know what to do. They took her to the psych ward, as they're supposed to. Subpersonalities can be assassins, sex slaves, infiltrators, disinformation, denial programming, priests, priestesses, ritual workers. They can have astral projection, remote viewing, summon demons, use or send them. They have runners, informers, punishers, breeders, containers of secrets, reconnaissance, carrier, uh, carriers of stuff, nurses, bomb makers, anything that is needed. G.H. Estabrooks was considered a world-renowned psychiatrist psychologist. He wrote a book, I've got both two copies because they're very hard to get a hold of called Hypnotism. In one chapter, he describes the weaponization of creating subpersonalities in a soldier. He describes how in US military, we've learned how to rip apart and create a subpersonality. We can train that personality in his words, in his book, to be an assassin, to spy, to be one that has programming for reconnaissance to be sent out to unleash disinformation. We can do this without the main person. Say his name's Frank. Frank doesn't know that he's got Bob and Fred and Joe and, 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 and Tom, the assassin, inside of him. The handler has the trigger word. You've heard of um, conspiracy theory. You've heard of uh, Manchurian Candidate. And so many times we see the movies and we think, wow, there's some reality to some of what they're saying, but G.H. Estabrooks, world-renowned, I say in the bad way, like I would say Charles Manson is world-renowned. G.H. Estabrooks was world-renowned. They knew how to do this. He wrote the book in 1947. There has been over 60 years of sharpening that and their ability. I believe this, the Russians, the Brits, the Nords, the, the Aussies, the Canadians, they took in the black horse of Nazi science, the Trojan horse, 
they wanted the technology, they wanted the science, they wanted the ability to super, supersize their, their, their soldiers and weaponization and so forth. But they didn't know the spirit that came with it. They didn't understand the agenda behind it. They took it in. Our U.S. military, Monarch, MK Ultra, all that information is 40, 50 years old. We have scratch, we just scratch the surface of what we know in U.S. military. G. H. Chesterbrook says in 1947, you know what to do? In every branch of U.S. military, we need to create these kind of soldiers to have a sixth hidden column of super warriors. 1947, G. H. Chesterbrook's hired by U.S. military. The technology was there. Most in the United States and Canada and Australia and England and Ireland and Scotland and Germany and the whole European Union in the UN and in Russia are sleepers. The subpersonalities with codes have been put down, in a sense, put to sleep. The main person, they work at the bank. They're an officer in the police department. They're a soldier working at a base in Montana. They're in your church, waiting. They believe they are the troops of the Antichrist. Whatever we say, they believe this. If you're here and you work with them and you've been able to break through the demonization and get down to the subparts and to the other ones that know all of this, you, you know what we're saying. This is found now in all the world. I don't know about Russia. We're just now trying to crack into Russia. Russia's natural, national security um, had a few weeks back, I was reading one of the articles where he said, the greatest security threat to the Russian government is not Islam. It is satanic, subversive groups infiltrating Russian law enforcement and Russian military. Mr. Putin, in a video I saw, I mentioned this morning, said two weeks ago in the video that I watched, referring to the whole world, everybody's afraid. He repeated it, everybody's afraid. Then he said, what we need is to create a global security force. Once activated, here's their agenda. Jared that we showed earlier, I don't know for sure, but I think. The VTEC shooter, I don't know for sure, but I wonder. The ones that were triggered in front of us, the ones that we've seen trigger and jump out of cars and roll, the ones that we've seen with super strength, the ones that had demonic powers and, and twilight languages, they spoke in our face and we had to, we had to rebuke it and, and, and engage in a warfare that, uh, that uh, I've, I've not seen any, in any, any church yet. 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 Their goal kill their assigned targets. Can I ask you the question, why are they in every single city in the United States? Why since the 70s have they been placed in churches all through the United States? On our website, we have a two-hour session called The Infiltration of the Church that deals with these kind of individuals and the mode of operation they use in getting into a church and going towards the pastor, bringing demonized objects, having a sex program subpart to be used to try to corrupt the pastor, using priestesses on the inside that are able to unleash curse during the worship service, bring in demonized objects to give us gifts, testing their powers, against the body of Christ. And we wonder why the church is so, I don't want to say emergent. Um, what I mean by that is, is um, silenced and suppressed and weakened, liberalized, anemic and pathetic. And it burns my britches as a pastor. It burns my britches that there is not outrage in the body of Christ. Amen. And I don't know if we've got down on our knees. I don't know if you've been to church anywhere lately where they pray for a half hour in the service crying out for the souls of men to be saved. I don't see that anymore. I don't know if you've been to church lately where the power of God is so heavy, like Acts chapter 4, that it, God's power shakes a building, sends the people out witnessing. I don't know if we've seen this. But I know one thing, 
that this Savior has promised to be with us to the end of the age. He is not faded. He's not withdrawn. He's not powerless. The trouble's not on his side of the fence. It's on our side of the fence. These, and I'm going to tell you right now, I have, I, I have, with what, I'm only giving you an hour's worth of 25 years of going to the underworld. And all I'm going to tell you right now is that it keeps me up at night sometimes in thinking terms of what's coming. They are planted in churches, planted in law enforcement, planted in government. They're going to bring sabotage. Soldiers and officers and governmental workers and people sitting in pews, once triggered to a subpersonality demonized, will no longer be the nice person you once knew. They will change instantly and unleash their agenda with speed. They know who their targets are. If you have them in your church, it may be that they've been assigned there as a sleeper so that when the day of activation comes, take out as many of you and the pastor as possible. Kill assigned targets, slaughter randomly, create fear, chaos, and terror, collapse existing systems. How are you going to collapse the United States? Not just economically. You're talking about every city. David Wilkerson's prophecy goes hand in hand in sep- with what, what we're talking about here. When somebody sent it to me and I read it, I said, he's talking about what they're saying. It might begin on this side of the country and begin to go across the land. This land and Canada and Australia, nobody's going to have to call me or write me and say, is it started? Because it'll all be down. How are you going to call? The grid's down. How are you going to go down the street? Martial law. But programmed chosen ones are killing some of the same officers and some of the troops, they're committing sabotage. Government buildings are burning. Riots coming, they're looking. They're uh, waiting for the theoron. That is the term God uses in reference to the Antichrist. In the book of Daniel, he, he, he looks like he's got the eyes of a man. God says that. Referring to the little horn. There's something about his eye. God gives a profile of this individual that will be the most powerful world leader in all of human history. A new supernatural power and its leaders, the apocalypse and the rise, they cannot be unveiled, they cannot rise unless they pre-exist, unless they are already there. In my opinion, Theron, the beast system, Antichrist and false prophet are alive and ready and raging to unleash. Today on the 15th, Russian River, United States of America and California, the Al Moor is a connection to Semiramis, an ancient goddess of secret elitist knowledge and wisdom. In 1992, um, a, a Fort Bragg Psy warrior that knew um, and had had training with Colonel Shannon, had training with Stubblebine, had training with many of the others, including Michael Aquino came into my office one day and said, and sat down with large sheets of paper and began to draw all this out and this owl and this, this human being thrown in the fire and they were doing all this stuff and they said, have you heard of Bohemian Grove? I said, no. They explained everything about it, told me everything about it, that many, many young girls had been taken there uh, so that their sex slave personality could be drawn up and be used in the nighttime parties all over the land. They're there to corrupt politicians, to blackmail. They're there to bring a dirtying of their lives. And this individual told me, one of the most powerful chosen ones I've ever met, took off um, a necklace with a little owl on it and gave it to me. When they explained this and later we've seen Alex Jones bring it out. We need to understand something. It is not an effigy, a mock or sympathetic magic, a fake human being. Left-hand pathers know this. 
when, if you've seen the video at all online, you see the robed individuals taking the so-called effigy and going to the fires and eventually throwing this thing into the fire. And uh, you hear this screeching, screaming sound. And then all of the senators and the presidents and the economic elite and the media moguls and kings of the world are sitting across the other side of this lake as they've observed what they think is a mock human sacrifice dealing with the cremation of their cares and they're applauding. Isn't that insane? When's the last time you've gone to a mock human sacrifice? Local school have one lately? How about the college, university? Come now to the next play in the city theater. It's a mock human sacrifice. Even if it was mock, no one there going to say, this is outrageous. Why would you have this this, this idol to a, this is a high place. Do you understand the Old Testament? This is a high place. And do you think for a moment they would do one ritual only per year? Thousands of victims have been there. Thousands and thousands of uh, senators and elitists and economic individuals. Who are the people that have the clout to bring world leaders to this location? In Connecticut, I was sharing this story and I was telling the truth about the ritual is they summon the powers and target the audience and unleash those spirits on those presidents and senators and media moguls and military leaders to influence them towards globalism. To blind their eyes. Satan is the God of this age that blinds the eyes, the power is in the spiritual realm. When that happened um, in Connecticut, a woman stood up, switched to a male, Nazi-oriented personality, and began to scream at me, we must cut his head off. The old ones are going to cut his head off. And L.A. Marzulli and Richard uh, had to take this individual out so that I could finish the seminar. And they listened to her out in the hallway, begin to unleash twilight languages to unleash dark spirits and curses. That right now is happening today at Bohemian Grove. Will you join me in prayer today and ask that God strike the area? Earthquake would take that little owl down, wouldn't it? The victims need to be saved, healed, delivered. Perpetrators need to be exposed and dealt with. The powers of that, the dark powers embedded in that open gateway to be confronted. Questions. Book of Acts is a great field manual, but I want to mention one thing because of the time, the cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, right? They say it was the emblem of suffering and shame where the physics of God... Now see, if I had um, Mikio Kaku and uh, Einstein and uh, the angry atheist Richard Dawkins and the scientist that believes that heaven is uh, fairy tales, Stephen Hawking, and if I had George Norrie all sitting at the bottom of the cross looking up, I want to ask all of them, what does it mean? Einstein, what does it mean? 700 years prior, prophecies, massive communication, 300 prophecies. He's coming, Emmanuel, a virgin will be a child. Massive communication, massive intel from God concerning his arrival. The incarnation is absolutely breathtaking. An angel comes in the gospel of Luke and screams out to the humans, this is good news of great joy. A savior has been born to you. All of heaven understands this. And all of hell feared it. The rulers of this uh, age would have understand who the Lord of glory was. They wouldn't have crucified him, right? It's astounding to me that there's... God in human flesh and he raises the dead and he heals people and he loves people and he feeds them and he tells the truth and, uh, and yet they're going to crucify him. And so on the cross, something happens. The physics of God 
Something has to be done to take care of the sin nature, the death code within, hell's rights to every human being. Something has to happen to break Satan's chains over the human race. Something has to happen and be uh, in us so that indestructible, irreversible immortality can occur. We can throw in Ray Kurzweil there at the foot of the cross. Michio Kaku. I like, I like, he's, he's really informative. I don't know where he stands spiritually. Richard Dawkins, just mad, mad, mad. No answers, just mad. Ray Kurzweil, the transhumanist, uh, sad, sad. Einstein, eh, he can't figure it out. The physics of the man on the cross the physics of what occurred, the wielding, the physics, the work, Greek word erge, that occurred there are beyond the sum total of human technologies, and physics, and everything else. I'm not going to apologize to the people at CERN, but they're not going to reach out, grab a hold of God's hand, pull it into the atlas, clip off a little bit of his finger, and say, hey, we found it. God's just too big. They don't understand infinite in comparison to finite. So many don't understand the cross. George Norrie got me crying one night and got me yelling in the middle of the night in my house about three in the morning when I was listening to him. I forget who he was talking about, but they were talking about time travel. You know what he said? George Norrie says, I'd like to time travel back, and if I could, I'd go to the cross. I'd go to the cross right where Jesus was dying, and I'd see if I can take him down. I listened, and George Norrie then said, but you know, I don't think he'd let me. I literally yelled out in the middle of the night in the dark, George, you're absolutely right. This is your Savior. This is, this is Messiah. This is God in human flesh, and he's come for you. He's dying for you. That's what will fix the sin code, the death code, Satan's rights. Shut the mouth of hell and give you the opportunity to be implanted with the Spirit of God who is the deposit guaranteeing indestructible, irreversible immortality with the ability to see God face to face. Can CERN do that? Can the transhumanists do that? Can the geneticists do that? Come on, tell me, can, can Richard Dawkins do that? I hope he doesn't go angry to his grave and lose his soul. I, I hope Stephen Hawking doesn't die in that chair alone. The book of Acts is, to me, one of the most incredible demonstrations of God's presence, God's purpose, God's agenda in the world. And God has not backed away from his agenda until the very end. Are you saved? Do you know Christ? If you've come in from the NSA, the DID, the DOD, or Homeland Security to check it out so that you can tell old Janet <laughs> that people that believe in prophecy are talking about strange things. Oh, know this. Take this back to her. Nobody loves you more than God does. Nobody knows you better than God. Nobody wants you more than God. And the only way to be fixed is by what Christ, God, did on the cross. So don't ask me to be silent or be ashamed or to be quiet about what the angel said, good news, great joy, a Savior. Not only died, but as Oz Guinness that wrote the book Dust of Death says in the resurrection, he blasted apart the finality of death. You have a message that is astounding. And though we can't, on an infinite level, figure the physics of God in that, you can sure experience it. Washed, cleansed, freed, and dwelt by the Spirit of God. Romans 8, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. If you go out of a conference with information, but you're lost, and you die, you are toast, you are gone, you are lost forever. And God takes no pleasure in that. 
And so we ask you to come to Christ. We invite you to come to a Savior. We invite you to the words of God. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We invite every believer to say, now is the day to ramp up your spiritual life, learning the power of God in the gospel, how Jesus heals, the power and the authority of um, Christ in dealing with the demonic realm, becoming to the point of Acts 5.42, where they never stopped. They seemed to be fearless. Nobody could stop them. Jail them, beat them, they'd still go. The only way to stop them was to kill them. Stephen went out in a blaze of glory without complaint. I think I'm done.